Hi, today we are going to show you how you can build a collaborative filtering recommender system using the Snowflake native app from Relational AI running in Snowpark container services. Let's get started. Throughout this solution, we will be using the popular MovieLens 100K dataset. To this end, the first step is to download the MovieLens dataset and upload it to Snowflake. You can download this dataset from the official Group Lens website. Next, we will use the SQL script to create a database name and recommendation demo and set it to use the public schema. We will then create an internal stage and upload files to this stage using the put command. MovieLens dataset is already split into train and test files. After that, we will create the appropriate file formats and create tables for train, test, and movie details. Then we will load this data into these tables using the copy command. Finally, this script runs queries to verify data in each table. Now we have the data ready in Snowflake. Let's create streams over these tables and load the data into the right database running in Snowpark container services. First, we need to have a RAI model and then run the following commands. Now we have what we need. Let's proceed to the notebook and build the recommender system. We will start by importing the Python libraries we will need, including the relational AI Python package. The relational AI package is a declarative query builder that lets you model relationships between entities in your data and extract valuable insights. In a model, entities are represented as objects rather than roles in a table, and fields are represented as object properties. The properties of objects and relationships between them are stored in the model as rules. Now let's go ahead and create our model, which will be named recommendation demo. After that, we need to connect our model to Snowflake and tell the relational AI package that we want to use data from these three tables. Train to build our knowledge graph and predict a list of recommended movies to users, test to test our predictions, and movie details to get additional information about movies. Let's continue by creating a number of types. You can think of types as representing real-world entities, that is to say, things that you want to use in your model. For example, in this demo, we are talking about users who watch movies, so in this case, we define types for user movie. And as we are going to build a recommender system, we can also define other types such as similarity, nearest neighbors, scoring, and recommendation. Okay, now that we have created some types, Let's define what a user is in our model by using the data from the train table. We first open a new context manager to inform the model that we are writing a rule. When we say t equal train, we are actually performing a selection to retrieve all rows from the train table. On the next line, we are filling data into our user type by saying, let there be an attribute for each user called user ID. Populate the value of that from the column user ID. So after the execution of this rule, we have told our model how to create and populate users. Users are entities which have one attribute called user ID. So if we want to then select our users by user ID, we will have a way to do so. Note that nothing stops us from adding additional information about the user, such as a name and a gender. The next section of the cell runs a query. The first line says, Retrieve all of the users in the model. The second line says, count up each of the users in this data set. And the last line says, to run the query and store the results in a variable called result. We could accomplish this task using Snowflake as well. However, in this scenario, we are accessing the data from the perspective of the conceptual model. We should see the output of the cell telling us exactly how many users are in this data set. And we see. We have 943 users, which is consistent with the 100k MovieLens dataset. Let's do the same thing for movies. We populate the movie type with movie IDs and movie titles taken from the movie details table. Then we will query to get the total number of movies. And it looks like we have 1682 movies in our dataset, again consistent with MovieLens 100k. Now we are going to establish a connection between user and movie type by adding a new attribute called watched for each user indicating all movies they have watched. After that, let's start building our graph. First, we use the relational AI object graph and attach our model to it. We tell it to treat this graph as undirected. 
Next, we write a rule to create edges between users and movies they have watched. This will implicitly also add nodes to the graph. Let's also check the number of nodes and edges in our graph object by simply using the fetch statement. And as you can see, we have 2,593 nodes and 80,000 edges. With our data now modeled as a graph, we can compute similarities between movies based on user-movie interactions. Movies watched by the same users will have a high similarity value, whereas movies watched by different users will have low similarity value. To accomplish this, we begin by creating a rule and use the cosine similarity algorithm from relational AI to compute scores for all pairs. Finally, we store this information in the similarity type that we have already defined. Let's also run a query and count the number of pairs we get from the similarity type. And here are the results. We have computed around 1,700,000 similarities. Next, we will find the top 20 nearest neighbor movies for each movie using the similarity score computed in the previous cell. We will define the nearest neighbor type with three attributes, movie, nearest movies, and the similarity score. Now let's write a method to execute a query example that returns the top five movies similar to Titanic. And here are the results. We can see, for example, that Good Will Hunting is the most similar movie to Titanic, indicating that these two movies were frequently watched by the same users. Now let's move to the scoring part. We will predict whether a user will watch a particular movie based on their past movie preferences, using this item-based approach. First, we will initialize users, movies, and nearest neighbors types. Then for each user, we will exclude movies they have already watched. We will find neighbor movie similar to specific movie M, and compute the score as the sum of the similarity scores for the target movie's nearest neighbors that the user has watched. Finally, we will add user movie score to the scoring type that we already defined. Now it's time to generate a list of key recommendations for all users. We will do this by ranking all the scores for each user, selecting the top K scoring movies and adding four attributes to the recommendation type. We will add the user, the score rank, recommended movie, and the score itself. The next section of this notebook focuses on evaluating our approach. We will use precision to assess the quality of our predictions. First, let's create a rule and link users to relevant movies, those watched by users in the test data. In the next cell, we will calculate the precision per user. For each user, we will count the number of recommended movies that are relevant, also known as true positive. We will divide this by the total number of recommendation k equal 10 in this case and set this precision as an attribute for each user. Now let's calculate the average precision. We will query our graph to get the precision for each user. Then compute the average precision for these values and return it. Good, we achieved 31% average precision matching the expected performance for this method while all customer data remains securely stored in Snowflake. All right, that's everything we had to show you for today. Thanks to a relational AI native app on Snowflake, we seamlessly built the recommendation system. Although the dataset used was a small graph with thousands of nodes and edges, our solution can easily scale to real-world datasets. Using cosine similarity for movie recommendations represents just one facet of the diverse spectrum of recommender systems available. In fact, the potential applications extend far beyond, limited only by the creativity of the practitioner. Venture into the realm of graph analytics and unlock a myriad of opportunities waiting to be explored. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed this example of what a relational AI Snowflake native app can do for you.